He's open for David Tell and Larry the Cable Guy. Please welcome to the stage is Tony Wenland. <laughs> You keep that round of applause going for Ken. All right. All right, Muskegon, Michigan. How the hell are we feeling tonight? <laughs> All right, folks. It's Saturday night. It's snowing outside. It's warm in here. We're drinking. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am high as right now. If you don't give me more energy than that, I will stand up here for the next 20 minutes or so staring at her. And she's got some nice ones, doesn't she, sir? Yeah. <laughs> so let's try this one more time. Muskegon, Michigan, how the hell are we feeling tonight? <laughs> I still have to cop a peek every now and then, honey. <laughs> oh, it is great to be here. Got in town a little early. Didn't do nothing. Started snowing. So I was back in the hotel watching TV. And I saw a commercial for McDonald's today. All the employees were happy doing their job. That's bullshit. <laughs> Man, I've never been to a McDonald's where there was more than one person happy. And that's usually the special kid. <laughs> yeah, digging out garbage, cleaning the bathrooms. He's just happy to be there and not on the short bus wearing his helmet anymore. <laughs> yeah, all right, Corky, you the man. I'll clean up that milkshake. That's what I'm talking about. This one commercial in particular got my nerves more than any of them because it actually took a snapshot of each smiling employee doing their job with a caption of what they're going to be when they get older. Like they had a 16-year-old girl on register, Susan, future WNBA star, Willie on fries, future lawyer, Pedro in drive through <laughs> future air traffic controller. <laughs> like anyone at McDonald's going to grow up to have a prominent job. Why don't they show the truth? Get a picture of the 16-year-old stoner sneaking out the back door to hit a joint. Oh, Scotty, <laughs> future McDonald's manager. <laughs> uh, Walmart commercials are even more annoying. These people aren't only happy to be at work, they're watching a smiley face bounce around and cut back prices. <laughs> if you're at work watching a smiley face do anything, lay off the acid before you clock in. <laughs> I guess that's the only way you get through a day at Walmart, though, is all drugged up on some. That has to be the ultimate dead-end job there. Yeah. yeah, you can go from like cashier to assistant manager to store manager, but it tops out after that. They don't let you retire from Walmart, do they? Because what happens when you get too old to do anything else in the store? You're the pissed off greeter at the front of the door. <laughs> the guy that just gave up on life. Every individual that walks through them doors, hi, welcome to Walmart. I just pooped. <laughs> oh, man, that's uh, you see interesting things on TV. I was watching HBO the other night. They had a documentary on the adult film industry. This is real cool. I'm a big porn fan. But then they started talking about gay porn. And I almost flipped the channel, but then an interesting statistic caught my ear. They said 85% of men in gay porn are actually heterosexual. 85% of men in gay porn are gay liars. <laughs> <laughs> just ain't possible, is it, fellas? These guys are actually trying to justify it. They're like, oh, you can make so much more money doing a gay sex scene. You can make anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000. That ain't enough. <laughs> uh, I remember the age of 12, my friends would ask me the million dollar question. You know the one, for a million dollars, would you suck a hell no? <laughs> and not once did I ever stop and think in the back of my head, a mill, sh I'll do it for a grand if you get it on video. <laughs> Document that. Uh, TV's great. I was watching Discovery Channel. They had a show on there called Abductions, interviewing people who were abducted by aliens. And at the very beginning of the show, this is no lie, this is what come across the screen. Have you ever been abducted and not known it? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me that shit would be kind of hard to slip your mind. <laughs> then I proceeded to ask, have you ever woken up in a strange place feeling nauseated and confused? Like, that was Jaeger bombs. <laughs> Hey, but I understand the confusion, though. Yeah, last time I was out drinking Jaeger bombs all night, I got chased home by a UFO. <laughs> yeah, I was memorized by his revolving red light on top of it. <laughs> yeah, it turned out not to be a UFO. It was a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> D 
Did wake up the next morning confused because I was in jail with a sore ass. <laughs> All my friends were like, what happened to you, Tony? I got abducted. <laughs> I don't know, Bubba, I swear. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Worst part about getting a DUI was my dad had to come get me out of jail. And my dad's a born-again Christian. So the whole ride home, he was preaching to me. Boy, you need to quit drinking. You need to quit gambling. You need to get your ass back in the church, become a born-again Christian like your father. By the time we got home, I was tired of it. I was like, Pops, honestly, why don't I just keep drinking, keep gambling, still not go to church, and just remain a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my Catholics at? Be proud. I can't quit drinking. I love everything about drinking. Hell, I like taking a piss when I'm really drunk. Oh, shit, that is so thirst quenching. Oh, ice cold and refreshing. Mm. Keep them coming. Mm. <laughs> then when it hits you, it hits you. You gotta go. You bust ass to the bathroom. You gotta brace yourself on the wall. You're like, <laughs> oh, I love Budweiser. <laughs> oh, f I forgot to unzip my pants again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ken Ferrier from Port City Property. In today's market, there's a need for a different kind of real estate company. With the people losing their jobs in West Michigan and the need for savings of their equity, people need to look at alternative ways to sell their home and maybe stay involved themselves. I've been selling real estate for almost 17 years. The last eight years I've been with Port City Property here and offering these alternative programs. Every year I do millions of dollars in sales, and yet I save people thousands of dollars in commission. So give me a call. Damn. A couple of you have been there. Here's to it. That's... Uh, drinking's great. I love drinking. Gotta be careful when you drink. My friends and I were talking about one night stands we had in the past. A buddy of mine turned to me and was like, hey Tony, remember that night you brought home that big nasty girl? Yeah, without thought, I responded, which one? <laughs> At that point, it hit me. I've screwed more pigs than Oscar Meyer. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Yeah, like, I just like watching women get drunk. You know, there's going to be a band here. Girls are going to be out on the dance floor, you know, getting their groove on. That's stage one. Stage one, when a woman gets drunk, the buzz kicks in. You're da dancing with your girls. Stage two, that's a little different, though, ain't it, ladies? Now you're drunk as hell, standing on the middle of the dance floor, talking about holding my earrings. I'm kicking that bitch's ass. <laughs> she stared at me. Uh, I love watching you win when you go out to the nightclub, you know? There's some things you got to bring with you, like your keychain with the pepper spray on it. Yeah, but that drunk asshole won't leave you alone all night. Just shh, shh. That burns, by the way. Just... just <laughs> And number two is a hair band or hair scrunchie. You got to wear it on your wrist, you know. Think, spends more time on your wrist than your hair, but you got to have it. <laughs> My favorite thing of all, seeing you ladies at a dance club. Maybe you can explain this to me. What is it about alcohol on a dance floor that turns you into temporary lesbians? <laughs> God, I love that shit. <laughs> yes, grinding on each other like two cats in heat, man. And, and dude. dude. <laughs> Uh, men and women do different things differently at a bar, too, or a dance club, you know, like throwing up, puking. Men, we don't do we? We'll throw up on ourselves at the bar, right, trying to get that six shot of Jaeger down. Woo! Ugh. Bonus. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with being a thrifty drinker, damn it. It's expensive. You ladies, you do it differently. You know, like 10 minutes ahead of time, the warning sign clicks off. You actually leave the bar, go out to the parking lot, You're usually with your boyfriend or husband, sitting there between cars, getting ready to hurry. <laughs> and right before you do, what do you say? Will you hold my hair? <laughs> Use that damn hair scrunchie on your wrist. <laughs> After us men throw up, we're ready to party. We're ready to drink some more. After you ladies throw up, what do you do? Sit on the curb crying for like 10 minutes. I miss my grandma. <laughs> no, bitch, you miss a Tic Tac. <laughs> uh, I love tattooed women. You got tattoos? What do you got? How many? Seven. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. That's my kind of one. I love multiple tattooed women. What do you, what you got? What's your favorite one? 
that. Uh, just, he just got seven tattoos. That's, that, that's cool, man. I, I dated a girl. She had six, but she had a theme with hers. You know, she had a hummingbird on her shoulder blade, a dolphin on her left breast, a butterfly on her lower back, a panther on her thigh, dolphin on one ankle, seahorse on the other. Making love to her was like watching a half hour of the animal planet, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, first time we had sex, I didn't know what to do. I threw a net over. <laughs> Felt like the crocodile hunter, actually. Yes. But the one on the, the, the dolphin on the left breast, that confused me, you know? Because the first couple times we had sex, about halfway through it, I'd look down, I'd start feeling guilty because I think she'd be giving Flipper a snack for doing tricks on her chest. That's Flipper. <laughs> but I got used to it, but that's the reason I couldn't stay with this woman. Because I'm thinking, yeah, it's cute now, but 20 years down the road, that dolphin ain't going to be so cute anymore. Man, things start sagging, that tattoo will start stretching. Next thing, you a walrus on her chest. Eh? <laughs> I guess that would have made me the egg man. Cuckoo, cachoo. Just <laughs> did it. Uh, I shouldn't make fun of women, though, because women taught me some of the best lessons in my life, like the value of a coupon. Yes, women know that. Men, we don't. Then a woman broke it down for me one night. She's like, see this dollar off coupon? That's like having an extra dollar in your pocket. So, you know, that's pretty interesting, but I had to put that logic to the test. So, a couple nights later, I'm sitting at the bar. <laughs> Yeah, with a pocket full of coupons. <laughs> yeah, none says shake your ass this way like a dollar off of Preparation H, baby. Just <laughs> Summer's Eve, two for one. <laughs> Get back to work twice as fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting that, sir. <sighs> women are great. I know this about women. They love their sex toys. Yes. Every woman I know has at least one vibrator with a household appliance for backup. <laughs> I know your secrets, ladies. There's a shower heads, the massager, washer and dryer. <laughs> if you live in a trailer park, you always got the plunger. <laughs> I, love dri I love driving. And I noticed something today, maybe you guys can help me with the answer to this. Why is it every time I see a car that makes statement through bumper stickers, it's always a piece of I saw an 84 Ford Escort that had a bumper sticker, I recycle, therefore I saved a tree today. Hey, you fall on your car. <laughs> <laughs> Insurance, that's what it's for. <laughs> uh, I love driving, you know, I love the traveling, I love meeting interesting people. You know, you meet a lot of stupid people, I'll tell you that much, yes, that's for sure. I was in uh, Lafayette, Indiana last week. And I went to the local office max there to buy a new stapler. So I'm standing there in the middle of the stapler aisle. An associate comes up, asks, offers his help. I'm like, no, you know, I'm just looking for a new stapler. I swear to God, this is his response to I was looking for a new stapler. What will you be using it for? <laughs> I don't know, maybe hang a shower curtain, lay some carpet, <laughs> go crazy and connect two pieces of paper together. <laughs> So he starts showing me all the different staplers they got, and they have electric staplers now. You guys familiar with these? Hey, the electric staplers, you slide the papers in, it staples it for you. I'm like, now that's a great invention, but honestly, how lazy can you be? <laughs> when did this become too strenuous to do at work? <laughs> Dude, I need a break. <laughs> There's like five pages there. I need to get a couple puffs of a cigarette or something, man. I gotta hook a brother up. Uh, do a lot of driving. I drive a lot at night, and there's a downside to that. Last year, I hit three deer driving at night. Did a lot of damage to three different cars, but I did manage to find humor in this. That is the fact that I have friends who hunt that didn't kill as many deer as me last year. <laughs> the same one's always trying to get me to go, too. It's like, hey, Tony, want to go hunting? It's like, yeah, let me get the car. <laughs> Wait for nightfall. Yeah, it sure be sitting in a tree for 12 hours covered in deer piss, that's for sure. <laughs> Go do your thing, man. <laughs> Everyone asked me the same question after each deer. They were all nice. They're always like, was a deer stunned by your headlights? I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to know if a deer stunned by my headlights? What, was he looking at you with eyes real big? I'm like, yeah, but I had the same expression on my face. <laughs> I think after hitting three deer, every time I see a deer crossing sign, I slow down and be cautious. But no, I can't, because those things are deceiving. 
Look at one if you pass one to nine. It doesn't look like a deer's gonna run out and damage your car. It looks like it's gonna jump over it and play. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see that about three in the morning, drunk off your ass, you're driving home thinking, dude, check it out, Rudolph's around here somewhere. <laughs> They put that out, dude. There's a UFO behind us. <laughs> I'm going to outrun him. <laughs> and last time I got pulled over, I knew I was going to get searched because he said he smelled the marijuana in the car. Yeah, so as soon as he asked if I had any on me, I looked him right in the eye. I said, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I do. But check this out. Me and my friends walking to the car, right? We saw this bag of weed laying on the ground. Yeah, since we don't do drugs, I said, let's pick it up and bring it to the police station. But since you're here, here you go. <laughs> and he let me off for originality. <laughs> I was one happy camper. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Uh, you get the occasional guest store on Cops, too. They're not on there every week. I was watching one episode. They busted three people for stealing out of the back of a Goodwill truck. That's the funny part right there, folks. All right. How sad is your ass if you're stealing from Goodwill? Eh? What the hell would you see on the back of a Goodwill truck to make you say, damn, I'm going to steal that bad boy? Cruising down the road with your friends, like, dude, you see that REO Speedwagon t-shirt? <laughs> I think there's a Joey Harrington jersey right next to it. <laughs> oh, he sucks. You want to hear a good Joey Harrington story? <laughs> this is no lie. I was in Detroit a couple months ago, and Joey Harrington was at the show. So, you know, I was having a good time. I was ribbing with him. I thought he was enjoying it, but apparently I pissed him off. Because about halfway through my set, he got up and threw a full bottled water at me. <laughs> yes, but it was all good, because the guy in the front row jumped up and intercepted it. <laughs> so we took it the other way. It's touchdown me, <laughs> Joey Harrington. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm pumped. Two weeks after Christmas, I'll be in Vegas. I love going to Vegas. Uh, there's no lie. I was walking through the casino about 3 in the morning, and I see a guy hit a jackpot on a slot machine. He's jumping up and down, woo-hooing. I'm like, I got to go over and see what this guy hit for. I go all the way across the casino floor to find out this guy hit a jackpot for 1,500 nickels. <laughs> I don't know what that adds up to, because in the end, it's not worth doing math for. You know, I think everyone who wins big in Vegas has a great Vegas story. Like, you know, I was down $1,800. I put my last C note on Black 27. Bam, I'm getting paid. We're sipping on bubbly the rest of the night. How does nickel slot player story go? <laughs> it was my last night in Vegas. I've been there for a week, and I'm down 45 cents. <laughs> I take my last quarter and pump it in the double cherry machine. Now, I couldn't play the maximum because I didn't want to lose 15 cents. So I let my two nickels ride, and ride they did. <laughs> Hell, me and Ethel May sucked down a pint of Mad Dog 2020 to celebrate. That's... <laughs> oh, man, you guys are going to have some fun with your headliner. Before I get out of here, though, one last thing. I've spoken a lot about smoking marijuana tonight, and there's a good reason for that. I'm out, and I'm looking. You can hook a brother up here after the show. <laughs> I do believe marijuana should be legalized for medicinal use. You guys back me up on that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, if you don't, I just ask that you be objective and look at it from my point of view. I believe you legalize marijuana for medicinal use. You've just found the cure to anorexia. <laughs> oh, you can't eat, you can't stimulate an appetite? Smoke this joint and head to the hostess aisle and call me in the morning. <laughs> so good. Like I say, if they legalize marijuana for, med for medicinal use, the crime rate will go up. People start committing more crimes. I don't know about you folks, but after smoking a joint, I have enough trouble getting off the couch and going to the fridge for a beer, <laughs> let alone robbing a bank. Let's just say miraculously I were able to pull off this heist. How the f am I going to get away? <laughs> Fleeing from the cops with my cruise control set on 35. <laughs> All my friends in the back seat, slow down, man. Where's my lollipops at? You guys have been great. I'm Tony Wendon. Good night. Come on, people, for Tony Wendland. Uh. Thank you for joining us for Rossi. I'm joking. I said every week on WMKG at 730 every Monday. Or catch the comedians live at Rossi's every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday starting at 830 p.m. It's all at Rossi's Comedy 
at its best.